Hi everyone and welcome to this new video where I'm going to reply to a common question that we often receive which is how am I supposed to recognize atonal music if I only work in a tonal way? Before I get to the answer I ask you to subscribe to the channel and to leave a like to this video by hitting the thumbs up button below and also hit the notification bell icon so that you will get notified each time we release a new video. Other than that, I invite you to register for our free online workshop, which is a three hour long online workshop packed with a ton of valuable content and exclusive information that will help you level up your, your training skills and understand how to practice your training depending on your current situation, your current level of skills and your current issues that you're experiencing. So don't wait to do it. It's totally free for now. So just click on the link below and submit your email address and name so that you will get notified when the workshop is going online. Okay, back to the main topic of this video. The answer to the question, how am I supposed to recognize atonal music if I only practice in a tonal way, which is how we suggest students practice, is kind of simple, but I understand it's not very simple to understand for most uh, people who are approaching your training as beginners. So I'll try to make it very clear and very simple. And I have to make a premise before I go ahead with the explanation. I'm talking about relative pitch skills. I'm not talking about perfect pitch skills, okay? So I'm talking about being able to recognize music, melodies, chords, whatever, from a relative pitch perspective. So using relative pitch, basically. That being said, the mechanism that allows people to recognize atonal music, atonal melodies, atonal chord progressions, etc., are very, very similar, are kind of the same to the mechanism that allows people to recognize tonal music, tonal melodies, tonal progressions, etc. This means that using relative pitch skills, you only have one way to recognize music. And the main concept that's at the core of recognizing music using relative pitch skills is the fact that our music perception is tonal, is context dependent. So no matter if you're working on a tonal context or an atonal context, the mechanisms that are going on in your brain will always be tonal based mechanisms will always be contextual mechanisms because that's how relative pitch skills work. So, and that's how our brain perceives musical pitch. It perceives musical pitch in a contextual way. So how are you supposed to recognize atonal melodies, atonal progressions, etc.? It's very simple. In order to accomplish that, you need to segment the melody, the chord progression into fragments of multiple tonalities. This means, for example, that let's say you are recognizing a 10 note melody, okay? What happens then is basically you perceive some notes, let's say the first three note, as belonging to one tonality, one key. You group those three notes and you make sense of those first three notes contextually. So you feel that maybe, I don't know, a minor triad is playing and then you have an idea of a minor scale since a minor triad often recalls a minor scale if you're trained in a tonal way. And then when you recognize that fragment, you go ahead and you recognize the note from the fourth to, I don't know, the sixth or the seventh because you feel like they are creating another context, a different context. And you see a fragment of a tonality there and you can kind of make sense of them uh, in that way. And you go ahead like that. So this is how you recognize atonal music using relative pitch skills. And of course, it's a very advanced skill to develop. You need to get through a lot of more simple exercises and tasks before you can get to this level. And this is the important message I want to deliver. You can't recognize atonal melodies or very harmonically complex music that has a lot of non-diatonic notes, non-diatonic chords, etc. if you're not able to recognize very simple tonal music yet. So just, let's say, just a simple pop song with four chords and a very simple melody line. You can't do that. You need to have a very good understanding of tonal music because that's how our brain works. 
on a musical perspective. You need to have a very good ability to perceive the context, to hear, to feel the gravitational center, the tonic, and all the musical elements that are included in the key before you can develop the skill of recognizing atonal music. This is very, very important because people often like neglect this aspect. And in our method, we make extra, extra clear that following a step-by-step -step path, it's absolutely necessary, vital. You can't accomplish anything without it. So I think the point is clear enough, but let's get to another important question you might have, which is how could I be so sure that this is the case? Well, first of all, there are scientific researches that really show that our perception of musical pitch is completely tonal and context dependent. I've made a specific video with all these scientific researches. You will find a link up here and one in the description section below. I really suggest you check out that video because it's very, very important in order for you to clarify your ideas about relative pitch, about really how to approach your training in an effective way. So make sure to check out that video. It will be really, really helpful to you. That being said, a second reason why this is true is that after working with hundreds of students one-on-one, -on -one, I've never seen any students being able to recognize atonal melodies, atonal progressions, atonal music in general without being able to accomplish basic tonal melodies recognitions and basic chord progression recognition. It's totally impossible. So I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen anybody being able to recognize atonal melodies without having tonal skills, without being able to work on tonal context very efficiently, effectively, and easily, I would say. So the takeaway here is to really, really focus on developing tonal skills and make sure your skills in a tonal context are easy and effortless. Then when you're at that level, you can start worrying about working on atonal context. Doing the inverse will only cause you to get frustrated, to struggle a lot without any reason whatsoever. So I hope this video answered the question. Let me know if something wasn't clear. Leave your questions in the comment section below. Lastly, don't forget to check out our free online workshop. You can check out also our website, our courses. You will find all the relevant links in the description section below. That's all for this video. I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.